Woods in the super welterweight division for the WBA world title. For Austin Trout, that reach advantage could be very, very significant because he is just a superb boxer puncher, and he will try and use that reach advantage effectively against Rodriguez, who, by the way, sometimes likes to fight on the outside himself. So we are ready for our second fight of the evening. The WBA Super Welterweight Championship, Austin Trout versus Delvin Rodriguez. For the introductions, let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Home Depot Center here in Carson, California. At this time, we present the second of our world championship attractions. It is brought to you by AT Entertainment, Golden Boy Promotions, and Gary Shaw Productions, along with Showtime. And sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina, AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. This world title is presented in conjunction with Cohen Promotions and Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing and is sanctioned by the WBA, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Bob Mack. Introducing to you our three judges scoring from ringside. From Huntington Beach, California, Jerry Cantu. From Chula Vista, California, Alejandro Rochin. And from Richmond, California, Marshall Walker. And a referee in charge. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Tony Krebs. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks with blue trim, fighting out of Danbury, Connecticut, by way of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He weighed in at a trim and ready 151 pounds, with a record of 26 wins, five losses, and three draws. He has 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his second attempt at a world title, please welcome the WBA number three ranked super one Welterweight in the world, introducing Delvin Rodriguez. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with zebra trunks, trim trunks, hailing from Las Cruces, New Mexico. He weighed in at 152 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 24 wins, no losses, 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight he is making his third defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undefeated WBA super welterweight champion of the world, introducing Austin, no doubt, Trout. Once again, a referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Tony Krebs. Gentlemen, I want you to obey my commands and protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves and go back and wait for the bell. Good luck. Thanks, Jim. 12 rounds, a super welterweight division. On the line, the WBA World Championship. Delvin Rodriguez, a 13-year pro with the opportunity of a lifetime against the up-and-comer, Austin, no doubt, Trout defending his title. Once again, big fights lie ahead for Trout if he can get past the tough Rodriguez. Several very interesting things about this fight. For Delvin Rodriguez, his last two fights against Pavel Volek, one of them the fight of the year, we're against a man who is just as different from Austin Trout as you could possibly be. He's a small fighter that comes in, flailing away, landing lots of punches, and it's a total brawl on the inside. Austin Trout, a stylish lefty who is, fights tall and fights from the outside. And against Wolak, a draw in the first fight. And in the second fight, the most recent fight for Rodriguez, a 10-round decision in the rematch. And so for Rodriguez, in order to train for a fighter, 
like Austin Trout, they brought in Sekou Powell yes. for sparring. And, uh, of course, a terrific left-handed fighter, uh, a big power puncher, but also a very good technician. And, you know, if you want to make it for the folks who want to make a case for Delvin Rodriguez in this fight, he beat two very good lefties, Mike Arnaudis and Shimon Alvarez, guys with slickness and skill. So he's had wins against left-handers like Austin Trout. We saw against Laporto on Showbox, a fight I was privileged to do with uh, Steve Farhood, that uh, Trout has some pop in his punches. He took Laporto out, and he can punch. Stop Laporto in the sixth round with a right hand on November 11th. And he's defended his title in some obscure places, Mexico. Been down there a couple of times. Had to go there to win the title against uh, Rigoberto uh, Alvarez, the brother of Canelo Alvarez. Defended the title for the first time, outpointing David Lopez in June. That fight not on American television. So when you look at Austin Trout, people say that he is the best champion that you never really hear about. And here, having the opportunity to fight on the undercard of the Tarver Coyote fight with potentially big fights ahead of him. They like his clean cut appeal. Mom's former military nurse. He is a young man who embodies what you like in an athlete, as is Delvin Rodriguez, by the way. I, you know, you, you can't find two young men that you would want to be around more. Both articulate, both interesting, and both very focused. Right now, it's been a feeling out process here in round one. Time. So the end of round one. As Trout goes back to his corner, and now what are the keys? Well, for Austin Trout, controlling distance is important. He did that in round one. Did not throw many combinations. That is going to be important for him. And he's got to use the angles against Delvin Rodriguez if Rodriguez decides to come forward, which he didn't in round one. For Rodriguez, he did not jab with conviction in round one. He pawed with that punch, but of course, there's plenty of time for him to get that going. And I do think he's going to have to get on the inside at some point in this fight, and I think the left hook is going to be his power weapon of choice in this fight. Rodriguez agreeing with you in our fighter meeting, saying, I mean, you asked him out, you said, uh, it's safe to say that this is the biggest night you've seen in boxing, and he agreed with you 100%. Yeah, it, it, immediately, he said, yeah, I, there's no question about it. This is the biggest stage for him. It's a title at stake, and he wants to prove that he's more than just somebody who can be known as a, a guy that got bad decisions. He said, my last two opponents are miles apart, but I fought all kinds of styles, boxers, punchers, lefties. He said, in boxing, you don't have time to think. You have to react to what's in front of you. So when I get in with Austin Trout, that's when I'll know. Trout, on the other hand, saying that Rodriguez can bring the best out of me. We want to showcase my talent, and this is another coming out party, especially on national television. Round two, scheduled for 12. Austin Trout in the zebra strike trunks delvin rodriguez in the white and blue trout the champion the wba world title holder in the super welterweight division and this fight is being fought at a, a slightly slower pace than our first one <laughs> you know it's possible that by the time this fight is over uh the number of punches thrown by leo santa cruz may eclipse the number thrown by both these fighters we hope that's <laughs> combined not the yeah combined we hope that's not the case and now they're they're going after it a little bit um and it's important i think for both these men to make a statement here tonight especially important for austin trout rodriguez the w is the key element for him but trout wants to make a statement some people think of him as a uh, just a, a slick boxer who will not make marquee interesting fights.
Louis Burke, the trainer of Austin Trout, a, a very fine fighter himself. Oh, nice, nice right by hand. Rodriguez. He has found a home for that punch. Louis Burke doesn't want Austin Trout in, in, in wars, though. He said, I want him to be aggressive, and I want him to throw punches. But I was in a lot of wars as a fighter. I don't want that for this young man. I want a, a long career for him. Right now, Rodriguez has landed better power punches here in round two, and he's found a home for the right hand. Trout going to the body with the straight left hand. Starting to become more aggressive now after getting tagged with that short right by Delvin Rodriguez. Rodriguez fighting out of Danbury, Connecticut. Raised by his mom. When he was in the Dominican Republic, he grew up on a farm before moving to Danbury. Took up boxing when he got to the United States. Eight seconds remaining. In the second round, scheduled for 12 super welterweights in the ring, 154. We talked about how Rodriguez needs to not paw with the jab. He needs to throw that punch with conviction and with meaning. Well, in this case, he doesn't, and he pays for it. You see kind of a pawing jab, and he didn't extend it, kept his left hand low, and Austin Chow took advantage of that. But Delvin Rodriguez was able to throw some very, very nice right hands, and there were... There's an example of him landing those right hands, counter, counter rights, and a couple of them were very, very powerful. Get nice and loose. This is your belt tonight. You're the experience. You, all, you just need experience for this fight. It's the belt is yours tonight. Third round. Scheduled for 12 for the super welterweight division, the WBA World Championship. Austin Trout, the champion in the white and zebra stripes. Delvin Rodriguez, the challenger in white and blue. Well, the very different definition of a close fight, both men have landed the exact same number of punches, 11 over the first two rounds. So. Neither man has set a torrid pace. Rodriguez has thrown fewer Austin. punches at 57. Trout with 77 over these first two rounds. We haven't seen as much of the Trout hand speed as we know exists. And I talked in the keys about throwing combination punches, and he's not done that yet in this fight. Trout telling us that he will be the bigger guy at 154 if we get into exchanges and that he will get the best and Rodriguez will quickly understand. He said this is the kind of opponent I've been waiting for and I'm looking to deliver a great fight to fight to showcase my talent. Neither fighter busy, though, here in the first three rounds, a minute and 20 remaining. Both men have had a hard time getting their offense going. They haven't, they've just, they're not be able to, to land. And Trout's a good defensive fighter, and Rodriguez can be as well. Wasn't always in the Volek fights, but he's capable of it. And Rodriguez has decided to stay on the outside. We didn't know which way he was going to go in this fight, but he has stayed outside. And that's part of the reason why we've seen a paucity of action, I think. Trout is happy to, to have him fight at this pace. Oh, my. Tremendous left by Trout. There's Trout trying to loop the left hand that time. Keep him up, Austin. Trout up. a little busier toward the latter part of this third round than we've seen in the first two. No knockdowns thus far. 20 seconds to go. Trout's starting to faint more and, and do more things 
to, to make his offense work and it's starting to pay off for him. Let him go. Don't push. End of the third round. Time. And celebrities in abundance here in Carson tonight, right outside of Los Angeles. We already talked to Abner Mares, the WBC Super Bantamweight champion. Interested in seeing where he goes next in his career. Devin Alexander, the young man from St. Louis, the former W. BC and IBF 140 pound champion and then there's Sugar Shane. Last time we saw him on Showtime it was against Manny Pacquiao. The legend Oscar De La Hoya. In attendance watching his golden boy fighters. <laughs> With family in tow. And the greatest female fighter of all time. The daughter of maybe the greatest fighter of all time. Layla Ali, Ronda Rousey. Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Champion. And then there's the Hall of Famer, Marshall Falk. Works with the NFL Network with fine broadcasting career. And in the end, it's Meta World Peace, who, by the way, Al, told Jim Gray that he wanted to come in and replace you tonight. Oh, okay. He wanted to serve as my partner. Hmm. But I quickly vetoed it. You, you're Because he may have hit me with an elbow. Yes. <laughs> he's been known to do that. Where's James Harden now? I think he's in the finals, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> I, appre I appreciate your loyalty. Let him up. Stop. Easy. Okay. This is the WBA World Championship. 12 rounds. The champion, Austin Trout from Las Cruces, New Mexico, in the white and zebra trunks, taking on Delvin Rodriguez from Danbury, Connecticut, by way of the Dominican Republic in the white and blue. I think the tenor, ten, tenor of this fight's going to change now. And it'll change because Austin Trout has changed it. In the last round, he decided to be more aggressive to see if he could find his straight left hand, which he did, and start to become a more aggressive fighter. And I, I think he's going to do a little bit more of that, and that will force Rodriguez to do the same. Trout not really working his jab out pawing with it but not committing to it to set up his punches we haven't seen very many combinations by trout yes the straight left hand he's used the left hook as well looping that left hook but not a combination punchers thus far he said he wants to showcase his abilities we haven't seen that no I think he started a little bit the last round and he's he, he's showing some flashes of it in this round, but you're right. The jab is help, would help set up the straight left, and he hasn't used it as well as he might. Rodriguez, though, here's a young man who has had a couple of decisions go against him, a number that he didn't think he should have. He really needs to step up the pace because, let's be honest, he's trying to take a championship away from somebody. He has suffered these difficult losses. He can't rely on close rounds. Trout has been mentioned as a possible next opponent for Canelo Alvarez. That's why he wants to look so good tonight, especially here in the Los Angeles area. Alvarez is in attendance, from what I understand, watching this fight. Thirty seconds remaining in the fourth. Not a lot of work by either man. Trout though has been busier in this round, I think. And Delvin Rodriguez really has gone into a, a, a an abyss, a, a morass, if you will. Uh, I mean, just not doing much of anything right now. He cannot afford that. In attendance, there he is, Canelo Alvarez coming off a victory over Shane Mosley on the Floyd Mayweather undercard fight. Got a big round of applause when he entered the arena this evening. He'll be fighting on September 15th, though obviously we don't know who that opponent will be. Tragically, uh, the Paul Williams not in that fight because of his accident. But who knows, it could be Austin Trout or Delvin Rodriguez uh, if they were to win this fight. Austin Trout has not looked impressive thus far. 
You're much stronger than this guy. You're keeping it too close. Okay. Let's pick up, pick up the punch count. You're much more athletic than this guy. Let's get, let's get it okay, done. Six. Come on. Show these people. Show these people what you have. Now you got to start putting on the pressure. And you listen to the trout corner, Louis Burke saying, pick up the pitch, the punch count. And the same from Delvin Rodriguez corner. And uh, they both need to really, as you said, step things up. Now, one interesting number, Trout has thrown 128 jabs to only 53 by uh, Rodriguez. But he has only landed 13, Gus, which speaks to the, the point you made earlier in this fight, that that jab has just not been as effective for Trout as he would like. Fifth round scheduled for 12 for the WBA World Championship. The challenger, Delvin Rodriguez, 26-5 and 3, 14 KOs. In white and blue, the champion, Austin, no doubt Trout, 24 and 0, 14 KOs. Nice right hand a moment ago by Rodriguez, who is now really pressuring of Trout. Now, Trout landed a straight left a little while ago, but both men now trying to engage a little bit more. They heard their corners. And really, both men come into this fight having fought fighters very different than the man they're facing tight. Laporto also nothing like Rodriguez, not as tall as him, an awkward performer. So both men are having a hard time dealing with the style of the man they're facing. 125 remaining in the fifth round. Looks like neither fighter is ready to take that additional step in to engage. Yeah, at this moment, they both, they're starting to do a little bit better and land some shots. But you, the key is nobody's showing any combinations. It's one and done for the most part. Rodriguez trying to land the right hand off the jab. Trout quickly to retreat. Nothing coming back. Kind of a slapping right hook by Austin Trout. He's not by nature a right hook artist. The straight left is a much better power punch for him. Put your feet. And Trout, it, it, well, earlier he was landing the straight left with more, con with more power. Now he's slapping a little bit with that punch. And these are all close rounds. with those left hands to the body. Tough, that was good work, good work. Give me three breaths. Let's go, Austin. You're getting on your heels a little bit. Don't pull straight back. When he comes towards you, just hold your ground and dig that, that left uppercut inside, okay? Catch him with two, you can catch him with two uppercuts or come back around with that right hook. That overhand's right there. That, or that, that left hook, left over. Another big celebrity in attendance, 50 Cent. He's a big boxing fan. I'm sorry, 50, 50 Cent. Yeah, been please. Corrected. Well, you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't screw up that one, should you? Big Floyd Mayweather friend and a big fan of boxing. And he boxes from what I understand himself. Yeah. 50 Cent. Austin Trout. Delvin Rodriguez. 12 rounds for the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. The WBA World Championship owned by Trout in the white and zebra striped trunks. Rodriguez in blue and white. All right, I joked at the beginning that these two men might not combine for the number of punches that uh, was thrown in the last fight by Leo Santa Cruz, who threw uh, um, 1,300 punches. Guess what? I might have been right. They've only thrown 228 for Trout and 150 so far for Rodriguez. So he, <laughs> I, may be, I may have been correct, unfortunately. 
There's a couple of good, there's a good combination by Austin Trout. As we take a look at the show stats, total punches compared to our first fight. Yeah. As I said, they're, they're, they're not, right now, combined, they don't look like they're going to get the 1,300 punches. And uh, the, the edge for Trout, you see, it's a very small edge. So these are very close rounds. And this is the kind of fight that you're, you're heading toward uh, somebody thinking, oh, good There's left Trout hand. With a left hand getting Clean. through. Clean, step back. And where's, where's Rodriguez's right hand? We saw it land earlier in the fight, but boy, he's not thrown that punch very much at all in the last several rounds. And now Rodriguez looks like he's a bit confused, still trying to yeah. figure out how to get close to Austin Trout. Trout admittedly says that the best part of his game is his defense. Very slick fighter. He wants to become more of a puncher, Austin Trout. Right now, Delvin Rodriguez having a hard time figuring him out. Well, the last several opponents of Austin Trout have landed, how about this, 18% of their punches combined. So you don't land too many punches against Trout. That is, in fact, uh, what he believes is his strength. But along with that needs to come some offense. Now, he has done much better in this round. And if there's been a dominant round for either fighter in this fight, it's been this sixth round for Austin Trout. Good jab by Trout. Show Extreme, we had some great action and some fights of note. Sharif Bogare, who is in position to fight for the lightweight title, I mean, it's Manuel Leva. First, he scored a knockdown with the right hand, and then when he swarmed his opponent, the referee stopped the fight, and Bogare, the winner in round two by TKO. Daya Davis against Sakio Bika. Bika, a perennial contender in the, divi in the 168 pound division doing very, very well, and ultimately, the referee would come in and stop this fight in the 10th round, and Sakio Bika got another win for him and keeps his career going as a potential contender. And Howard Davis's son, Daya, suffers a tough loss. Sakio Bika, according to Andre Ward, gave him his toughest challenge when he fought Ward in Oakland, California, as a replacement in the Super Six World Boxing Final, or Classic rather, when Andre Durrell pulled out. Bika fighting Andre Ward really tough, and Ward yeah. said, hey, I learned a lot fighting Sakio. Of all the fights we saw during that period, really, he gave him the best go, and it wasn't part of the tournament. So, uh, yeah, Bika's a very, very tough fighter, has always been. And speaking of the Super Six, how about Carl Frotch in Nottingham defeating Tremendous, Lucien Boutte. Tremendous performance by Carl Frotch in what was an exciting fight. And uh, we continue to see Carl, who we, we saw here on Showtime. Of course, he's a just a fine fighter. I'm sure Rachel Cordingly was very happy. <laughs> Not quite as vocal, though, as she has been in other fights. Austin Trout right now has the opportunity, I think, to take control of this fight. There's a, great, a straight left hand. You mentioned Rodriguez has been a bit confused. He has not been aggressive in this fight, and though I mentioned he's fought well against several other southpaws, isn't doing so against this southpaw. And I think Austin Trout, this is the moment, maybe a moment of truth for him, where he wants to market himself and show he can be a dominant fighter and get opportunities like the one against Alvarez in September. And I think now would be a time for him to take control. And he's, he's doing that to some degree. Some of our Twitter fans feel that Rodriguez can steal this fight if he starts putting his punches together. Right. 125 to go in the seventh round, scheduled for 12 for the WBA World Championship as Austin Trout puts his title on the line against 
Delvin Rodriguez. Trout telling us he wants to look impressive. This is a huge stage. Keep him up. Could Canelo Alvarez be next? Well, right now, he has not put on a great show. No, but he but he's picking up the pace a bit, and I and, and I agree with you that it's been an, it, it, an uneven effort by Austin Trout. But I think what he's starting to do now is show his pedigree by controlling this fight better, and he's been more aggressive. And Delvin Rodriguez is no pushover in there. But these coming rounds will be telling us. These are the ones that will tell us whether Austin Schock can rise to the occasion and, and make himself a marketable fighter. He's winning these last several rounds. There's no question about that. Part of that's because Rodriguez has been so inactive. Get off him. Coming to the end of the seventh round, a herky-jerky fight for Austin Trout and Delvin Rodriguez. Absolutely no rhythm by either fighter. And don't forget, folks, coming up after this fight, the first of our two featured fights, Winky Wright returns after close to a four-year layoff. He looks terrific, 159 pounds, taking on Kid Chocolate. Peter Quillen. Yeah, he actually came in originally 160.2, but then immediately lost those uh, 0.2 pounds. And there's Antonio Tarbert making the 200-pound limit. Taking on Latif Coyote, 199 pounds. Coyote, a specimen. Yeah, that's for sure. Youth versus experience. That's, a, that's an interesting and we hope entertaining matchup. You take the Be smart, though. Be smart about it. Eighth round for the WBA Please. World Championship. Austin Trout, the champion in white and black. Delvin Rodriguez, the challenger in white and blue. Well, eight, nine of the last 10 fights that Delvin Rodriguez has been in has gone the distance. Uh, and one of them was a 11 round fight. So this is nothing new for him to be headed toward the end of a, a fight. And we mentioned he's had some difficult decisions. Now, in this fight, while there were a number of close rounds early, I think Austin Trout has kind of taken control in the last several rounds of this fight. As we take a look at the show stats, total punches. And what, you know, as we look at this, clearly Austin Trout is doing better. And a lot of those, that edge has come in the last couple of rounds. But when you're landing 22% of your punches, it's not what you want. And he isn't throwing a lot either. There's a nice body shot by Austin Trout. Rodriguez has just been so inactive in the fight, this fight. That's a very low number, especially for him. When he fought Pavel Wallach, he threw many more punches. But again, that was a different kind of opponent. A short fighter coming in, uh, just literally presenting himself as a target and also being very active. Good right hand by Rodriguez. Haven't seen that for rounds. Let him go, Delvin. Work out of there, good. Straight left hand again. That's been the most successful mm -hmm. punch for Austin Trout. And he's thrown it to both the body and the head. So from that standpoint, that part's been very good for him. And a looping right hand may have hurt Rodriguez a bit. He backed up slowly. Trout is putting his imprint on this fight now. There's no question he's controlling the action. And it's up to Rodriguez, I think, to do something dramatic to try and turn this.
But this is not the kind of effort that you expected from Delvin Rodriguez. You expected no. him to take more chances yep. knowing what was on the line and what kind of opportunity he had been given to get in here. You couldn't be more correct. That's exactly right. At 32, having suffered those tough losses, you are absolutely right. Lo va a conseguir, pues entonces, oye, tiene que hacer, tiene que ponerle presión. Entra, le corta el ring, bájate con él, hazlo trabajar. Tenemos que poner presión en él. We need to work. Make him work. Put pressure on him. You're fast when you get going. You can't hit this guy with one shot. Do you understand? You cannot go back on the beat him like that. Now with one shot. Invent things. Let's go. Let's get going. Do not let him take control of it. The kids are here. Do not let him take control of this fight. You understand? Oh, you right. Do it for your kids, baby. Do it for your kids. All about it. It's all for Kyra, baby. Come on for Elijah. Let's do it. The ninth round here in Carson, California, and this is the WBA Super Welterweight World Championship. 12 rounds. The champion is Austin Trout from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Undefeated, 24-0, 14 KOs in white and zebra stripes. The challenger, Delvin Rodriguez from Danbury, Connecticut, by way of the Dominican Republic, 26-5 and 3, 14 KOs. Not a lot of action by either fighter, although Trout has started to come on in the last few rounds. You know, we talk about numbers of punches, and it's important, and, you know, Austin Trout averages 81.2 punches in his last three fights. Rodriguez has averaged 72. That's above the middle, junior middleweight average of 58. They're just not doing that tonight. They're not putting their punches together. Trout is doing a better job of Rodriguez than Rodriguez, but neither man has really thrown a lot. And he knew that Trout will be defensive coming into it, this guys. fight. That's his style. However, you did not expect for Rodriguez to be as defensive and as tentative as we've seen and really through the ninth round. And it's been up to Austin Trout to attack, and he's been doing that for the last four or five rounds. But that isn't his normal posture. He'd rather counterpunch a bit. Watch your feet. There you see the defensive moves of Austin Schott. Clearly he's a, a, a very slick defensive fighter, and you saw him slip three punches by Rodriguez. That right hook by Trout, an example of that's not his best punch, but he can mix it in occasionally. And I think one of the reasons this fight pales in comparison, the pace set by the first fight with Santa Cruz and Malinga was extraordinary, and it further, uh, I think, demonstrates that this fight has just not been fought at a, a feverish pitch. Santa Cruz throwing over a thousand punches. Yeah, 1,300 some, and uh, as we mentioned, you know, he was already had, was eighth on the list of uh, fights that CompuBox has done over its history in the bantamweights, and uh, so that will put him higher on the list. He, he really was active tonight. Backhand. Now there's a left hook or a left hand to the body again by Trout. And again he's controlling this round and probably winning it. I'm gonna cut you loose this round, man. Just keep throwing them shots, just like what you're doing, all right? Keep working the body. He does not like the body. Keep throwing that left hand right into his body, okay? You can hit those other shots and right down the sword like this. Keep working off your jab. Don't, don't get off your jab. Keep working off of it. Faint it, double up on it, okay? That left hand, left hand, mix it up. Overhand, hook, down the... 
All right, this is the Home Depot Center here in Carson, California. Normally the tennis courts here, the ring set up in the middle. Terrific weather in Southern California, 64 degrees. It was hot earlier today, Al, but generally the case here in Carson, when the sun goes down, it gets cool and perfect for boxing. Gorgeous night, and this uh, Home Depot Center has become a frequent site of important boxing matches. Never forget when we were here for the Rafael Marquez, um, Israel Vasquez fight number three out here. It was an electric night, and this site is a very good site for boxing. Don't forget, coming up, our two featured fights as Winky Wright, once upon a time, pound for pound, considered one of the best fighters in the world. He fought Bernard Hopkins, Shane Mosley, just to name a few of the legends that he has faced inside the ring. He comes back after a close, after a close to four year layoff, and he'll fight a young man from Grand Rapids, Michigan, by the name of Kid Chocolate, Peter Quillen. Quillen undefeated, young, strong, and hungry, and stepping up in class. And then our main event, our partner, our main man, Antonio, the magic man Tarver, the five-time world champion, will face a Nigerian by the name of Latif Coyote, who also is just as hungry said he prayed for the opportunity to fight Antonio Tarver and when it finally was announced that he would get the opportunity he's leaving it in God's hands because he knows that this will be his night. A lot of storylines being acted out in those two fights and obviously in the Coyote fight as well against uh, Tarver. Winky Wright telling us that he will fight Kid Chocolate just to show all of the network executives at Showtime that he's ready to fight for a title after he beats him, and he wants to go right back at it. Now, wow. a nice combination by Trout. Nice right hook after early in the round, and a great straight up after early in the round when Rodriguez had forced him back. Now Trout coming to life with some power punches. Trout also utilizing his jab as well. Trout continuing to use that straight left hand to the solar plexus. Louis Burke telling his 26-year-old fighter to keep that straight left hand aimed and cocked. And that was good work by Louis Burke in the corner. He wants the jab, the straight left to the body, and he's, he, he pointed out two important things to do. That's what you want to do in the corner. And the end of the round, let's go behind the scenes. The magic man, our partner Antonio Tarver, who tonight at 43 years old, go back into the ring and fight Latif Coyote. Champ, you ready? Well, he's pretty relaxed, that's for sure. And he thinks his preparation for this fight has been good. He said, make no mistake, I did not take Latif Coyote lightly. I, I trained as hard as I would for any of the, all the major fights that I've had in recent times. And of course, we're going to see how well he can do now at age 43, uh, 10 months after beating Danny Green for the IBO title, one of the fringe cruiserweight titles. And uh, no signs of nervousness there, that's for sure. Very relaxed, so much experience for Antonio Tarver as he faces a man that's 18 and 0, Latif Coyote. 14 knockouts. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 11th round. Scheduled for 12 for the WBA Super Welterweight World Championship. The title holder is Austin Trout in the white and zebra stripe trunks. The challenger, Delvin Rodriguez, in white and blue. And how do you see this fight thus far? Well, you know, Rodriguez came out in the last round trying to be more aggressive, and Austin Trout backed him up and landed the better power punches. I think Austin Trout has controlled the last five or maybe even the last five rounds of this fight for sure. And in the early rounds won enough so that I think Austin Trout is probably ahead on the scorecards. The Ooh, nice uppercut by Rodriguez. Yeah, good punch. 
And he's going to have to make something happen. I think Trout is ahead by a fair amount in this fight. But again, uh, many of those rounds were close early. Good shots by Rodriguez. Now he's doing what we thought this 32-year-old would do in most of this fight. Go out to try and seize the championship. Yeah, Rodriguez has been reluctant to let his hands go. You see, when he does, he finds some success. There's a straight right hand by Rodriguez. And the, the number of clinches in this fight have been, I think, almost zero. And that indicates that Rodriguez has never gotten in that big punching range where he could really tee off on Trout. What's left for Rodriguez if he does not win this fight? Well, it's going to be difficult. You know, he'll, he'll, he, he, he's had a number of losses. He could always, lay, you know, uh, hang his hat on the fact that he was robbed. If he loses tonight, he's not robbed. I mean, so far in this fight, Trout has taken control of a good portion of this fight. Rodriguez has been more aggressive and better here in round 11. And Trout is bending down and giving him an opportunity to land that uppercut, and Rodriguez is doing it. And a little bit unartful in this round by Austin Trout. Doing a few things to give Rodriguez better opportunities. Slapping right hand gets through for Trout. Nice, sharp, crisp right hand by Delvin Rodriguez that momentarily slowed Trout's momentum. There's another right hand as he rolls the left hand. Delvin Rodriguez, maybe his best round thus far in the 11th. By far. Let him go, Delvin. Five seconds to go in the 11th. One more round remaining in the WBA World Championship and in the Latif Coyote dressing room. A big smile by the 29 year old Nigerian. He knows that this is the opportunity of a lifetime. Here's a young man started boxing late came to the United States for an Olympic qualifier as a member of the Nigerian national team was supposed to go to Chicago didn't make it there got stuck in New York then went to Atlanta found his way out to LA and on a wing and a prayer he found the right manager and after that point undefeated record 18 and 0 and he stands on the precipice of being able to claim his biggest victory yet against a five time world champion. A fight in which it's almost a no-lose situation because he's undefeated. If he wins, he puts himself right into the uh, the sweepstakes to fight for a cruiserweight, another cruiserweight title. And uh, even if he loses, he's still a young man with a, a future in the cruiserweight division. But he doesn't want to lose tonight. And he's beaten two straight lefties in that Godfrey and Felix Cora Jr. to prepare for Antonio Tarver. Twelfth and final round. For the WBA Super Welterweight World Championship held by Austin Trout, undefeated, 24-0 in the white and zebra stripe trunks. Delvin Rodriguez, the challenger, 26-5-3. He says he's been robbed in a number of fights that would have allowed him to take a quantum leap to a world title shot. Now he has it. And this is the final round. Let's see. It has not been an exciting fight. These fighters have not really let their hands go in terms of combination punching. And Delvin Rodriguez, you can feel the urgency on his part in this round. He, he won the 11th round, most likely, and he has come out aggressively here in round 12. But even winning his last two rounds, in my opinion, probably wouldn't win him the fight. Maybe it will, depending on what the judges are seeing. Judges Jerry Cantu, Alejandro Rochin, and Marshall Walker, all of California. Nice combination Whoa, again by down, Rodriguez, and he slips. Easy, easy. He's probably winning this okay, round. Okay. Okay. Box. So far, anyway. And for Austin Trout, the the question is, he is if he wins this decision, 
and doesn't put an exclamation mark on it at the end, what does it do for him? Clearly, it keeps his title and tells people he's a an effective well, fighter. But did he market himself well enough tonight? That's the question. Ooh, nice right hand by Trout. Co a counter right hook over a left hook by Rodriguez. And then a straight left hand by Trout. So in when he has those moments, Trout shows us he's capable of power punching. And he has momentarily at least stalled the aggression of up, Delvin Rodriguez. Good body work by Trout. A nice right uppercut by Trout. Sends Rodriguez backwards. Ten seconds to go in the 12th round. And right hand by Rodriguez. Another right hand by Rodriguez. Wow, if only we had seen more of that in this fight from both men. It ended on a high note, that's for sure. This is where Delvin Rodriguez landed a couple of punches, actually, and then slipped over the top of Austin Trout. Luckily, he was not injured. And then Trout was able to get his right hook in. Not a punch he's known for, but that was a nice one. And the Trout uppercut at the end, a very effective punch. The right uppercut was one of his best punches of the fight. And they they traded and exchanged for the last 40 seconds of this fight, and it was very entertaining, but we didn't see enough of that. And the numbers, the final show stats, will show us that not a lot of punches thrown uh, by either man. Uh, you see the jabs and the power and the totals. Um, obviously, Trout busier and landing uh, more punches. And only 9% of the jabs landed by Trout and 4% by Rodriguez. Six jabs landed in this fight by Rodriguez. I mentioned he did, needed to be less tentative, more uh, throw jabs not in a tentative way. Clearly, he didn't live up to that. And as you mentioned, Dow, the bigger question for Austin Trout, would he show enough to be able to become a headliner and fight the likes of an Alvarez? At 154 with so many terrific fighters in that weight division. He was effective, but not spectacular. All right, let's go inside the ring for the decision. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Jerry Contu scores about 117 to 111. Marshall Walker sees it 118 to 110, and Alejandro Rochin scores about 120 to 108. All three in favor of the winner, and still undefeated, the WBA Super Welterweight Champion of the World, Austin. No doubt, Trout. Hey, baby. Austin Trout still undefeated with the unanimous decision over Delvin Rodriguez to retain his WBA World Championship. And I think as you look at those scores, the one thing I do want to point out, 120 to 108 by Alejandro Rochin, that was really an inappropriate scorecard. You have to give Delvin Rodriguez some rounds, especially the 11th. Now let's go to Jim Gray, who's standing by with Austin Trout. All right, Gus, thank you very much. Austin, congratulations. How would you assess your performance tonight? Was it the way you wanted to appear? 
you know, I'll probably give myself a six and a half, seven. But, you know, I, I can't even talk bad about the performance. I got the W. You know, I did what I had to do to get the win, and I'll do that against any opponent. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to get the win. You know, if uh, Kirkland ain't ready to take that fight with Canelo, I'm ready to unify these belts, baby. So come on, Cinnamon. Let's go ahead and get, get no, one, no one champion in this division. So if you say it's a six and a half or a seven, where is it you have to improve? You threw an awful lot of jabs tonight, but you were unable to connect on a lot of them. Well, you know, I had to set something up. I, I couldn't get in the rhythm. You know, he's an awkward, smart fighter. And he changed it up every round and it took me about half a round to get a beat on him. So, you know, shout out to Devin. He did his thing. You know, he's a good fighter. And I taking nothing away from him. You know, I had a six and a half because he was, you know, a good fighter tonight. But I will be a 10 when it comes to cinnamon. Trust and believe. You just pointed out Alvarez and he needs an opponent. Do you feel as though you marketed yourself well enough tonight to put yourself in that position? I don't know. I guess we'll find out soon enough. You know, I thank Al Heyman for putting me on the card. You know, my team, Greg Cohen Promotions, Rizzo, uh, you know, Louis Burford getting me prepared. And I thank God first, first and foremost for the victory and just for the opportunity. Congratulations, Austin. We look forward to your next fight. All right, thank you, man. I appreciate it. All right, Gus, back to you. And many, many. You got to get out. Get out. And thank you very much, Jim Gray. Now let's go to Steve Farhood standing by with another fighter of interest in the 154-pound weight division. Thank you very much. Got a fighter, by the way, Canelo Alvarez, who Austin Trout referred to quite a bit over here. Canelo, Austin Trout did not give himself a very good rating for that performance. What did Canelo think? ¿Qué pensaste de esta pelea, Canelo, Austin Trout, de verdad no lució lo mejor? Bueno, fue una, una pelea que, que no lucieron los estilos, a lo mejor por los estilos, pero felicidades a Trout. Well, congratulations to both fighters. Maybe because of the style, it wasn't such a great fight. Well, Canelo makes for very exciting fights. Austin Trout, as he proved again tonight, is very difficult to hit. Does he feel he could get Trout into the kind of fight he likes? Si pelea Canelo contra Austin Trout, ¿tú crees que le puede dar que con frecuencia a él? Bueno, no, no me gusta hablar mucho de eso. Creo que ya arriba del ring ya es donde se ven las cosas, pero... Lo que sí puedo decir que que a mí no se me dificulta lo zurdo. I really don't think it's uh, you know to talk about uh, a boxer is not correct, but uh, against southpaws I do a pretty good job. So, but you have to demonstrate it on the ring. Canelo, September 15th, you were going to fight Paul Williams, obviously because of his tragic accident. He won't be fighting, but you will be fighting on that date. Uh, Austin Trout just called you out in the ring. Do you want, do you want, uh, would you take that fight? Is that a possibility for September 15th? 15 de septiembre iba a pelear frente a Paul Williams debido a la tragedia, no va a pelear. Pero Austin Trump dijo ahora que quería pelear contigo. ¿Acepta el reto? Es una, una pena lo que le pasó a Paul Williams. Ya se me han caído dos peleas. Se me han caído dos peleadores ya. Pero pues ahí, hay una lista muy larga. Vamos a, a escoger el que, el que sea el mejor. It's a real tragedy what happened to Paul Williams, um, and two fights have fallen through, so he's just wanting to see which fight is the best for him right now. All right, we appreciate it, Canelo, undefeated champion at 154, Austin Trout, undefeated champion at 154. Maybe. We'll see. Gus, back to you. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Still to come, our main event, and it has gotten nasty. Antonio Tarver says Latif Coyote's dream is going to come crumbling down. Coyote says Tarver has the name but doesn't have the heart. And that takes us to another look at our Facebook poll question. What will prevail in tonight's Tarver Coyote fight? Tarver's experience and savvy, A, or B, Coyote's youth and power. Visit our Showtime Facebook page and cast your vote. Right now, we'll have the results later this evening.